You're listening to the Miss Artastic Podcast. Inspiration for art teachers. Here's your host, Kathleen McGivern. Okay, my lovely friends. Guess what? We totally made it through Halloween. Now, I love Halloween, so I'm sad it's gone, but I always feel like it is a milestone in the classroom. Like now, routines are set, kids are hopefully more used to the hand washing and mask wearing if you're in person, or if you're online, hopefully they are more used to logging in on their own or participating, you know, those kinds of things. But really, hopefully they are just participating. It is hard for me to comment because my situation, well, it's different from your situation. Each of us are in very different situations as no one has a consistent set of rules that we're following. That is just life right now, you know? I'm just going with the flow because, hey, I can't control it anyway. And it makes me stressed out when I think about all the new, strange, and unusual things that I'm doing. Let's take a look at some art ideas that you can do in your classroom or art classroom or at home if that are perfect for November, okay? So this whole episode is really going to be focusing on taking a step back from things that are going on right now and just brainstorming ideas that you can do with kids for November, okay? So here are my November art-themed ideas. Okay, so for the month of November, the first thing that you can do with your class is to create art with the theme grateful. First, you can begin by brainstorming what the word grateful means with your class, and you can cover topics within that theme, such as um, covering what a sense of feeling of appreciation is or kindness towards others, and you can also talk about being thankful and what it means and looks like, okay? So you can really talk a lot about kindness and appreciation. And that will be your initial part um, for your brainstorm. And that's gonna get the kids thinking about what all the word grateful means and get them thinking about ideas for art themselves, okay? And what it really means to them and how they can show it, okay? Next, you can ask your kids what kind of art that they could make that shows the word grateful and what it means or what thankful means or what kindness is. So you can spend some time now after the brainstorm having kids collaborate maybe on a collaborative posters um, or chart paper where they're creating large brainstorms over what they think they create they could create around the theme grateful. After you can have the kids take pictures of these collaborative posters or chart papers, or they can go and hang them around the room. And then you can have them take a little post-it note or a tiny sticker, and they can place the sticker or note beside an idea they like. This way, they are voting for a favorite idea. You could have them do two votes if they are smaller and they're really excited about the ideas, and it's hard to pick one. Or if you have a smaller class, then you can do a two vote thing as well. In this way, you can immediately be informed as what, as to what you should plan for the next month or so. And also plan in a way that covers your own students' interests, which will of course immediately engage them when they see that they are creating art that is reflective of their own ideas. Once you can visually see all the different ideas that the kids have liked, so it's kind of like a Facebook like, but with either stickers or post-it notes, then you can kind of build a unit around their own interests. That's one way you can start talking and creating grateful themed artworks in your classroom. Okay. Other ways you can incorporate the theme grateful in your classroom is by having students create collages. 
So they can go through magazines or newspapers, and then they can use a variety of me mediums um, and also clip out letters that spell the word grateful. And they can take all these different art mediums and their letters and other things that they find in there and they can cut and glue them and onto their paper. So after they find some letters that represent the word grateful, so all the different letters in that word, um, they can glue that down, then they can cut out things that they are grateful for or appreciate having in their lives that they find in the magazines or newspapers, if, that, if they find anything relevant. Or they can also add their own drawings of things that they're grateful for or appreciate and value in their worlds using choice mediums. So this is a way you could bring in student choice. They can choose and you can let them pick anything or you can give them a cho option of like four or five different things they could use and then they can choose what they want to add into their artworks. So they can also add words to their collages around the theme grateful or to their artworks that they're creating. Um, and these words can explain or show further meaning for what the great word or theme grateful means to them. So what grateful means to them, they can expand on that with words in their artworks. Also, kids can create um, by using this as a sketchbook prompt. So your sketchbook prompt in November or your sketchbook assignment for um, a week in November or the month, depending on how you run your sketchbook program, um, could have the theme grateful, okay? So your theme could, for the sketchbook or the prompt could be something like, what are you grateful for? Or what are you thankful for? Finally, your students can create a portrait of someone that they are thankful for. Okay, so this is my last idea for this theme before we move on to a new topic. Okay, so perhaps in middle school or high school levels, kids can find or take a picture of someone that they're thankful for in their own lives or worlds. So it could be a family member or a friend or someone that is just playing like a leadership role in their own life, whatever it means to them. Before they create, they can take a photograph of the person. Then they can use that picture as reference in a portrait artwork they create for that month or a couple weeks, depending on how often you see them. And if they're doing a larger piece, that is going to take some time. Okay, so that could take the whole time that your instructional time for November or your whole studio time in November depending on the scale of which you take this idea. Okay, so those are some ideas for um, incorporating the theme grateful into your artwork assignments for November. Before we continue on, we're going to take a break and I'm gonna share with you how to access free art lessons on my YouTube channel. And when we get back, we're going to talk about social emotional learning as an art option for projects in November. Hey lovely friend, I just want to pause this episode to let you know about my YouTube channel. In my YouTube channel, Ms. Artastic, I create art lessons for kids. They include full art projects that are themed around the elements of art and principles of design, but also, just fun drawing tutorials that kids love to draw with. I create videos with art education in mind and I'm always mindful to use art vocabulary, making my videos both friendly for home and the classroom. Search Ms. Artastic on YouTube or find the link in my blog, MsArtastic.com. Be sure to subscribe. Now, back to the episode. Okay, so the next concept that you can introduce into your classroom or home or art classroom for November as an art idea is bringing in SEL to your classroom. I love using art as an opportunity to teach SEL or social emotional learning in the art classroom. 
Some of the things that you can teach for social emotional learning in your classroom are growth mindset lessons. You can teach about the zones of regulation. You can teach kids to reflect on experiences in their own lives. And you can also have kids set goals and think about their dreams and aspirations for their future. For example, kids can create artworks that reflect on their own past. This is where they can get out the things that are maybe their worries or that are bothering them, or they can think about the things that bring them happiness. And they can create an artwork around that. They can also incorporate their dreams for the future on the same artwork. As well, students can use this opportunity to explore things that they can control and things they can't control in their own worlds by drawing it instead of just writing about it. So for instance, if you're creating an artwork or maybe it's a sketchbook prompt on one side of the paper or one half, or you could put it in circles or whatever um, symbol or border that they want to create, it could be really up in to them, but they can create one part of their page, things that they can control, and in the other section, things that they can't control in their own worlds. You can also teach social emotional learning by exploring emotions and what they look like through drawings and artworks. So what a kid looks like themselves when they are in the green zone. So they can start thinking about what does my body do or my face do or what do I say when I feel or if I'm in the green zone. What does that look like to other people? If someone to look, were to look at me, what would they see? Or if I were to look in a mirror at that time, what would I see or notice? So they can illustrate um, what they look like when they're in the green zone or if they're feeling calm and peaceful, for instance, they can draw what they're looking like when they specifically themselves are feeling down or feeling blue or sad or also called the blue zone in the zones of regulation. Or they can draw what they look like when they are in the yellow zone or how they feel when they're worried or frustrated or scared. All of those kinds of things can be expressed in art. Art is a great way to allow students to explore their own choice of mediums and they can do social emotional art as artwork, artworks themselves. Or you can explore them during the month of November as sketchbook assignments. So these can also be assignments that students can do over distance learning or remote learning or in hybrid situations. So you can give the assignment obviously in person or do a demonstration and then also give that for the kids who are doing remote learning as an option. So yeah, I really think it's going to be very important for teachers to explore social emotional learning this year, not only because it's important for us and our students' own well-beings, but it's going to be imperative this year because of the pandemic. There's a lot going on politically in the world. There's a lot going on Globally, there's a lot going on in our own communities. Schools themselves are not the same as kids remember them being before the pandemic. So there's a lot going on and they might have experienced maybe loss in their lives or not just like physical loss, but like the loss of even just like a typical Halloween or having not gone to school for a while. or Maybe they still haven't returned since spring break or March. So there's lots of different kinds of losses. And I think that it's important for teachers to really ensure that we're meeting their mental and physical needs, their well-being and emotional needs, right? So we're thinking about whole child teaching. So really make sure that you try and experiment and explore some aspect of social emotional learning in your classroom, whether it's as small as a sketchbook or if it's larger as an art piece itself. And if you haven't explored social emotional learning, you can take a look online. If you Google it, there's a lot of resources that explain what social emotional learning is and the different core parts of that um, as well. If you look on Pinterest or Google, you can find more activities that teach social emotional learning if you're a homeschool parent or if you're interested in that or if you do like art therapy and stuff like that so you can 
take a look a lot around and do some research yourself to if you really want to dive in on this topic because it's kind of big and I cannot imp- imp- unpack it as in this one idea segment on my November idea podcast. Okay, so I do recommend you take a look if you're feeling like one day that you need to go browse the internet, you know? So, yeah. Finally, we're going to talk about some winter art. So the fi- last idea for November, um, for ideas that you can use in your classroom for November, or themes you can build around is winter art. So you can start exploring some winter art in your classroom because of course it takes time to make it. By the time it's made, it's good to display during winter. Okay, so this is the time of year that you can begin creating all your wintry scenes and exploring the joy of creating art that has to do with winter. Unless, of course, it's not winter for you, then save this segment for when it's applicable. Just jot down those notes and file them to a place that makes sense for you. Back to winter! I love to use this opportunity to create artworks that explore value by creating snowy value scenes, whether I'm doing black and white value backgrounds like a nighttime scene, or maybe I'm just creating a gradient or value um, scale from dark blue to a light blue with maybe some little bit of snowflakes flowing down in the foreground. Maybe it's like an evening scene and I have some snow coming down and just glistening or there's like a snowman in the night. How cute would that be? So it's a really great way to explore creating landscapes that have a winter feel. You can also start exploring cool colors with your students during this time. And I love creating cool color art schemes in my classroom. You can do a lot with silhouette drawings for this as well. You can also have students think about what kind of animals they see in the winter time or animals that live in snowier climates. Maybe it's Northern Canada or the Arctic or Antarctic. You can have students start thinking about what animals live there and then you can create artworks around those animals. Maybe you're drawing them in sketchbooks or they're investigating them online and then they are doing magnifications on parts of those animals. So just closing in on parts of that animal for magnification. Maybe it's an elk's head or part of the antler or maybe you're closing in on part of a penguin's face or the feet. So you can think about it in different ways that are maybe just as strange and unusual as this pandemic. But don't feel like you can't enjoy the seasons even though it's COVID. So really use this as an opportunity to explore winter themed stuff. So that way you have them available for displays in your school or on a digital art gallery for when winter really comes if that is your season right now. To everybody who is not having winter right now and is going into maybe a summery month, I am sorry that I am giving you ideas for winter at this moment. I recognize that not everybody's in winter, but for me, it's what's happening in my world right now. As of course, I live in Canada. However, I live in the rainy side of Canada, so for the next 10 10 months or so, it's going to be rain with a little bit of snow. Maybe a little bit of sun. Let's hope. All the gray inspiration you'll ever need will be right outside my window. Anyway, don't forget to check out my Teachers Pay Teacher Store for Thanksgiving, Winter, Growth Mindset, or Social Emotional Learning Art Lessons. I have created over 500 art lessons that explore a bunch of themes and holidays and seasons. So, for some speedy lesson planning, make sure you check out the store and click the link on the left side for the category that you want. For example, winter, you can just click it. I got it all organized for you. Or for a fully planned curriculum, make sure that you join the Artastic Collective. Wow. Let's try that again. Make sure you join the Artastic Collective Art Teacher Membership when it opens again in January. Well, my lovely friends, I hope you enjoyed this November podcast episode. And I really hope that you take some of these ideas and make them your own or explore these themes with your kids. Don't forget to do classroom brainstorms either. You can do them digitally or even on a Zoom with the whiteboard feature and just see what your students' interests are before you start planning or creating art lessons because if it is to do with their interests, they're going to be a lot more engaged and will be wanting to do the artwork. So don't forget to use that little vote for an idea art trick. 
um, where you give students either a little sticker uh, or sticky note um, where they can go and place their vote on an idea that they like. Happy planning art teachers and artists at home and all you homeschool parents or just general classroom teachers that want to incorporate art into your classroom. I hope you enjoyed this episode and don't forget to subscribe and share it so that other teachers and art teachers are able to get ideas for teaching art in their classrooms. And I hope you enjoy your week and I'll see you of course in a couple weeks with the next episode where I talk about creating happiness in your classroom.